Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I wanted to bring you a quick tips and tricks guide for the spirit. She's super fun, super strong, if you know how to play her. I want to give some basic tips but also finish this video with some more small tricks that I personally use that can set you apart for being a beginner spirit to an expert. So besides getting a good headset, here are some actual advice to begin your journey to becoming a menace to survivors in the fog. First of all, Spirit is a slower killer. You need to use her power. She won't get the same result as Trapper if you just try to brute force chases without doing anything extra. So Spirit's power, Yamoka's Haunting, works in that you hold your power button, it will charge, then you will enter an ethereal plane. In this plane, you are slightly faster and invisible to the eye. However, you make a distinct phasing sound that is directional. This is the only clue for survivors to where you are. You cannot see the survivors while phasing, but you still have some audio and visual clues. Spirit's power is basically an educated guessing game. Both the spirit and survivor can't see each other, but have some clues as to where each other are. When you use your power, you know the general area in which a survivor will be. Your job is to use the clues provided to you, as well as general knowledge of survivor movement to get close enough to hit them. For example, if a survivor is out in the open with a filler pallet nearby to run to, it's pretty safe assumption that that's where they will be headed. However, a good survivor will know that's what you're thinking and might still try to get it anyway or try to be unpredictable to confuse you. They could choose to run towards the direction you were coming from to make you overtake them and lose their location, or they could try to walk in a completely random direction to avoid giving you clues as to where they are. Mastering the skill of educated guessing on spirit is what really sets you apart, and these tips will set you in the right direction. Tip number one, sound. Everything makes sound, and that is how you catch survivors while phasing. Scratch marks will only give you an idea of where survivor is heading, not their exact position. In addition to that, sometimes scratch marks can be wildly misleading. An uninjured survivor still makes small audio clues, and some survivors will make more noise than others. Most every action makes sound in this game, including vaulting windows and pallets, going into lockers, falling, healing, and surprisingly, survivors a few seconds of walking after running. Survivors gasp for breath after running just like real life. So if you're phasing after survivor and they decide to walk away mid-phase, you can still hear them for a few seconds. That is how you can catch survivors out while they are healthy, but it is miles easier to catch someone while they are injured. Granted, they don't have any audio dampening perks such as Iron Will. It is better to try to get a hit while they are healthy and have your phase available right away while they are injured and making pain sounds. Remember, you can hear where they are, but they can also hear where you are, which leads me to my next tip. Tip number two, use your directional audio to your advantage. Just because survivors know where you are does not mean they can do anything about it. You are faster than survivors while phasing. So using your power to catch a survivor before they get to a safe area is a valid way to use her power. However, not all maps are created equal and some have more dense loops. Spirit is special in that she isn't forced to kick less safe pallets. Instead of getting rid of a loop right away, you can start to phase and go around. Remember that survivors can hear you and will try to prevent being caught out. So you can use your power to try to trick the survivors to put themselves in a situation where they can get hit. Going one way with the phase and then doubling back to get a free hit before they can react. You are faster than survivors while phasing, so tricking them into going into an animation such as vaulting a pallet or a window would give you time to possibly get to the other side of that and get a free hit before they can physically do anything. Tip number three, using your phase for map traversal. Because Spirit can move faster while phasing, you can use her power for better map pressure. However, that does come with the downside. If you're phasing, you can't see any survivor on the way. You might be able to miss them, coming for the unhook, or maybe they're just hiding and you could otherwise catch them out. You also might not have enough phase to get an easy hit on a survivor before it has recharged. That is why I recommend that when you use your power to travel the map, do you so sparingly and don't use your entire phase, allowing it to recharge when you actually do find a survivor. Which brings me to my next tip, the best add-ons. Spirit is a high tier killer and therefore 
shouldn't have too enhancing of add-ons, but that doesn't stop some from clearly being the best ones to use. Being the number one best add-on, in my opinion, is Movement Speed. There are currently two Movement Speed add-ons, the Muddy Sports Day Cap and the Mother Daughter Ring. The Muddy Sports Day Cap is definitely the one that you should be using because while the Mother Daughter Ring does give you more of a speed boost, it deletes scratch marks while phasing and therefore is not very beginner friendly. Movement Speed is crazy good. In addition to letting you cover more distance while phasing, it can close the gap of survivors being able to react to your phase while in a loop. If survivors are closely listening to you and want to react to your location, they won't be able to if you move quick enough. For the second best add-on to use, to me, I think it's a recharge add-on. However, there are some people who think otherwise. Recharge gives you your power more often and allows you to use it more freely without being punished. It could also give you the ability to traverse the map more often, leading to better map pressure. Other good add-ons include activation speed and duration. Activation speed plus movement speed could be a deadly combo to catch up to a survivor quickly, but Spirit's base recharge for her power is really, really punishing. So you have to be perfect with your phases and also not be near a safe pallet where you are forced to kick it and come out of your phase. Duration is also the same. You have to play super well in order to get value. There is also a hidden downside with duration add-ons. The way they work is they add more charges to your power, making it last longer. However, your recharge is the same. So because you have more charges you have to wait for, it takes even longer for your power to become available again. The add-on doesn't specifically say this, but it does do that and it makes it a pitfall for newer players who don't know. There's also an add-on that is supposed to be super beginner friendly, which is the dry cherry blossom. It deletes scratch marks, but when you get close to a survivor while phasing, it will give you killer instinct. I honestly believe this is a very bad add-on, and for a few reasons. One, it makes you dependent on it rather than learning sounds, which can force you to run that add-on every single game. And two, it deletes scratches, making it difficult for newer players to learn the normal way. It's too much of a crutch that will hurt you in the long run, and I recommend never using it. Spirit doesn't have that exciting of add-ons. The more rare ones are gimmicky like nurses and are too situational. And then the other less rare add-ons are just different levels of the same type. And getting add-ons nowadays isn't very hard, so you'll never use them. I don't really want to go over all of her add-ons in this video, so here's a quick tier list without explanation as to where I think everything belongs. Maybe in the future I'll make an add-on tier list slash guide for Spirit. If that's something you want, definitely let me know in the comments. Tip number five, the standstill mind game. Another great tip for playing Spirit is to do absolutely nothing and stand completely still. Spirit has very little visual information that she has started charging her phasing power. Because to the survivors, it looks like she's standing still. This used to be huge back when Spirit didn't have directional phasing sound. You would stand still and there wasn't any indicator that you were actually phasing. So you could trick survivors into running back into you and you'd hit them for free. This still works to a small degree. Since phasing is super fast, survivors will try to react as quick as possible to prevent you from getting a hit. You could also delay the start of your phase to see what a survivor will do if you think they've already entered your power. Wait a few seconds, see what they do, and then start your phase with the knowledge of what they were planning. Don't try to use the standstill mind game too much, because remember, they'll figure it out and most likely will adapt to your playstyle and call your bluff later in the game. A little side note, there is something I haven't mentioned because it's so rare that someone will play around it, but when you start your phase, sometimes the spirit's idle animation will reset. Personally, I don't see this as a big deal, and I've only encountered a few survivors who will try to play around this. It's not exactly reliable, but if you find someone who appears to be doing exactly that and it's a problem, just play as if they always know you're phasing, which shouldn't be too big of a deal because you are still faster than them in your phase. You can also try to use objects to skew the survivor's view of you to prevent them from seeing your animation reset. Like I said though, it's super rare that someone will do this and you still have the upper hand being faster while you're phasing. Tip number six, positioning. Where you start your phase can be so important. For example, if you go to a simple playable loop and the survivor gives you the pallet, stand right in the middle of it. Most likely, the survivor will stand at the far edge of the loop. You can use the pallet to sort of hide yourself, giving them less of a hint that you've started your phasing, and then phase around to the other side of the pallet to attack. You should never be phasing around a safe pallet such as Shaq, because they're going to hear you and be able to drop the pallet on the opposite side of you, or if it's already dropped, they're just going to vault to the other side, forcing you out of your phase and making your power go on a long cooldown. Phasing out of sight can also provide small benefits. Every little bit counts. You don't actually start making a phasing sound until you're about a second after you start, so that can definitely help a little bit. Another small detail about Spirit's phasing is that she leaves behind a husk. Normally, this isn't a big deal, 
However, you can use that to body block areas. There isn't too much utility to this. However, sometimes it can catch a survivor out if they're not expecting it. You can also work for phasing around an already dropped pallet. If you stand a small bit away from a pallet and a survivor vaults into your husk, they cannot vault back and are trapped between the husk and the pallet. This works because your husk has collision and if it's positioned correctly, will block the prompt for survivor to vault back over the pallet and also prevent them from leaving. It's a bit difficult to pull off every time, but mostly survivors don't vault into you and will just leave or go around the loop. For the few times it does work though, it's really satisfying. Tip number seven, the small things. At some point, there's only so much advice I can give you before you have to brute force learning spirit. The best way to improve at a killer is to simply play them. There are a bunch of small bits of information that you can learn from and pay attention to to really amp up your gameplay. Stuff like knowing that a crouch survivor makes less sound than a non-crouching survivor. If a survivor runs Iron Will and they crouch, they are almost completely silent depending on what survivor they're playing. Granted, not many people run Iron Will. Most of the time someone is silent is because they're running off the record, but at least that's still on a timer and could run out during the chase. You can also track someone by looking at the environment. Grass moves when a survivor walks through it, so you can use that to track silent survivors. Each survivor also makes a different level of noise while injured, so learning each one will be beneficial in getting as close as possible before an attack. Another bit to remember is that survivors tend to do the exact opposite of what you expect them to do while you are phasing. If they're running one direction and you start phasing, they might run back into you to try to confuse you. Along with her phasing power, Spirit has a sort of secondary power. While she is walking around, sometimes she will blink in and out of sight. This is something you don't have any control over and you don't even know when it's happening. It's called passive phasing and there is one add-on to increase its frequency. It's a weird part of playing Spirit. Sometimes it will confuse a survivor and make them hesitate, leading to you getting a hit for free. But still, or you have no idea when it's happening, so it's not like you can take advantage. However, there is a small way you can try to play into it. If you are waiting at your power to recharge and you're at a loop, you can walk back and forth to try to get a passive phase to confuse the survivor. Might as well since you're waiting anyway, and maybe you will get value. Another bit of advice, a lot of perks don't really mesh well with Spirit. Perks that remove her tear radius are almost completely useless because she makes passive phase sounds while walking around, so you aren't completely silent anyway. But also, not having your tear radius slash chase music would only make it easier and more clear for a survivor to hear your location while you're phasing. Slowdown perks are always a good choice. Perks that work by basic attacks are also a good choice. Chase perks are just okay because your chase is already super good, so making it better is just kind of unnecessary. Don't use Strider. It will only hurt you in the same way that the Dried Cherry Blossom add-on does. Aura perks also don't work too well with Spirit because while she's phasing, you don't see the auras. Sometimes they'll work out, but screen perks are just better because you still see screams while in phase. Another thing you will have to learn for yourself is when it is a good time to phase. You can't just be using it every single time it's available because her power has a long cooldown. Not phasing when they run to a pallet that you absolutely have to kick is a good example. Basically, any obstacle that make it so you can't catch a survivor with one entire phase duration, you should just wait until you're in a position where you can achieve a hit with just that. Overall, you will get better by following these tips and just playing. Spirit isn't as easy a lot of people make her out to be. Not seeing a survivor is something you definitely have to get used to. Every survivor also plays differently, so you have to learn to adapt to that mid-game. Spirit is a very satisfying character to play, in my opinion, with huge reward being able to circumvent a lot of frustrating parts of Dead by Daylight that applies to other lower tier killers. I hope you found this tips and tricks video informative. If you still have questions, list them down in the comments below and I can try to answer them. Thank you all so much for watching. If you wanted to watch some more high quality spirit gameplay and see me use these tricks, come check out my Twitch channel. I stream quite a lot and quite a few different killers as well. So even if spirit isn't your main killer, you might still enjoy yourself. If Twitch is also not your thing, check out my other YouTube videos, including some spirit games. I hope to see you all again. Bye.